Friday, Sacktown Sports. Going to try to get you some really important information here relating to the Kings in the offseason. My concern is that whatever this personal grudge is between our next guest, reporter <laughs> for the Athletic, Tony Jones, who covers the Jazz, and Kyle Draper, I just hope it doesn't get in the way. No, Can no, this, this is or? my guy, man. This is my guy. That no matter, you know, if I drop 50 on him in a pickup game or, or, or we just talk at basketball, he's my guy. Uh-huh. Jay's still lining him up here. Oh, is he? All right. Yeah. I, he didn't hear that part. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Say I that. was hoping he yeah, was I'm not down. I might have to yeah. uh, use that again. All right. Here, yeah. Why don't you bring your buddy on? For All right. I, I got my guy, Philly native, East Coast legend, covering the uh, jazz and the nuggets. For the athletic Tony Jones, he's a little lighter in the wallet. I, I guess Tony had to take some people out to Fleming Steakhouse <laughs> in, in, in Utah recently, dude. How much did that set you back? Welcome to the show. That cost me four hundred and thirty-three dollars. But you got to ask me why. <laughs> Tell me why. What happened? Did you lose a bet or something like that? I lost the bet. Do y'all want to know what the bet was? Please, yeah. y'all yeah. gonna say it's the stupidest bet ever. Let's hear it. What was it? Tony Bradley's freshman year, I made a bet that he would be in the league for 10 consecutive years. What? <laughs> what, <are> you... <laughs> what kind of bet y'all doing out there in Salt Lake, bro? Man, I don't know what it was. We, I think we were at, like, I, we were bored. It was after, it, it was during a media availability. You know, I, I think we had requested Tony. We were waiting for him to stop shooting. And I don't know, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was. Like, you know, we were just talking about Tony Bradley's viability as an NBA player. He had just been a first-round pick by the Jazz. And I was like, yeah, he'll play 10 years in the league because he can rebound the ball. How many years did he last? Silence. Yeah. He made it six. Okay. All right. He, he wasn't Anthony Bennett or anything like that, you know, a, a year or two and then bounce. Yeah, Tony, you got to tell us about this um, this on-court rivalry between yourself and Mr. Draper. Yeah, keep you, it real, too. You told keep Jay one real. thing a moment ago, and Drapes is kind of telling us a different story, and we're just trying to figure out where the truth lies. You're a reporter. Where's so, the truth? I thought we were just chilling and having, like, a, a friendly family game of basketball. We were in one of our – uh, LDS churches. Um, we had just finished the prayer before the game started. Um, <laughs> okay, all right. That's, I'm gonna let you tell it. I'm gonna let you tell it. We had just finished the game before the prayer. The prayer before the game started. Yeah. Kyle scored on me and hit me with the too small going up the court. Uh -oh. I, I mean, just hit me like. This is silly right here. Too small. <laughs> Ran back to the court. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, everybody else looking at him. No, it was fun, though, man. Like, Kyle's a heck of a rebounder. Um, it was hard for me to keep him out of the block. Mm -hmm. And, uh -huh. you know, it, it, you know, he was a good he was a good player, a better player than what I thought he was going to be. So, it, it was oh, definitely yeah. fun. So, every time he comes out, I want him to play with us. And, and nice. here's the thing, Tony. Let, let, I wasn't even in shape. You got the D version of Drapes. You, you ain't even get my A game. It, it, it was like I was like Jordan coming out of retirement first game, Rusty. And I still lit well, y'all up. You so. never play, correct me if I'm wrong, though. You had never played at that altitude, if I'm not mistaken. At that altitude? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. That That's a real thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, was, no, that thing is real. Yeah, it's real. You know, it, here's the thing about Tony, and I'm glad – we, he's setting the record straight because if you follow Tony on social media, that was a very backhanded compliment, by the way, you're a better player than I thought. You no. He, he, <laughs> and he was better than I thought. Okay. See, here's the thing okay. about Tony. And he's an East coast guy. I'm an East coast guy. We do a lot of talking, but every time he plays, he's tweeting out. Yeah. Almost had a triple double tonight. My team went five and zero. Oh. I killed these boys. When I was back in Philly, I did this. When I was in college, I, and I'm like, man, you're doing a lot of talking. Let me see for myself. Uh -huh. You know what Tony is? He's like Chris Paul. He's Ooh, the point guard. You wow. know what I mean? He's running the offense, making the right read. So I'm going to give you your props too, man. That was a fun time. And, Tony, what would your what would your the NBA fun, call for Drake's the fun be? Thing, the yeah. fun thing about me right now is I don't look like I can play basketball, but I can play basketball. Mm. 
what would what would your NBA comp for drapes be? He says you're Chris Paul. Um, let's see. What what would my NBA comp be? You know, I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Dennis Rodman. Wow, uh, come on. Now college Dennis no, Rodman I'm, or I'm, pros listen, Dennis? No, because I can no, get no, buckets no, no, too, no, Tony. No, 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 I can no, get no, buckets. No, no, that is a that is that is the highest compliment. Like okay. because All right. you could not keep him off the glass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like boy. no matter like you couldn't keep him off the glass. He had all types of he had all types of energy. He had all types of movement, and he ended up not. What I do remember is that he ended up winning like three or four games for 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 the teams that he was playing on that day. Yes, wow. yes, and, and I, Tony, I said my comp is more like uh, Anthony Mason. Larry Johnson, something like that. Your so magic you, like you got the you got the rebound, but you also can handle the ball. Right, the right. Ball and make and I can make good reads, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not out there trying to get forty or nothing, but you know, I'm tr- I'm trying to play winning basketball at the end of the day. That's what's I the most important. With, I can deal with that. See, the Anthony Mason compliment works too because you be trying to intimidate people and everything. I, like, do. You know, <laughs> I do talk a lot. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> listen, the white kids that we play with, they were all scared of you by the end of the night. I just want to let you know that. It, it, my, my my final thing I'll say about this, when I play pickup at Lifetime here, they always say, Kyle, we're glad you came because you raised the intensity of the mm. game. And so that's all I'm trying to do, Tony. It's a competition. This ain't no friendly game of basketball where we sing and saying prayers beforehand, breaking <laughs> bread afterhand, you know, and, you know, praying to Jesus and everything. Nah, dude, I'm out there trying to get the W against you. Well, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll say this. The next time I come to Sacramento, please take me to that lifetime because I think my previous trip to Sacramento, I played at the uh, 24-Hour Fitness right next to the arena. Oh, yeah. How was that? It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> Everybody thought they were going to the league. I can't play. Right, like right. That. Everybody, exactly. Everybody thinks they're good. I hate ball like that. Yep. Hey, Tony, can we ask you um, about a player that, you know, a lot of people around here are saying, King should get this guy. King should get this guy. And there's rumors about, well, this guy could be available. Uh, is there any reason why the Jazz would make Lori Markinen actually yeah. available? Or is this just something that other fans of other teams are dreaming about? Um, it's something that, all right, let, this is a convoluted answer. So everybody who is listening to this, I need you to listen to me very carefully. Okay. Um, the Utah jazz do not want to trade Lowry marketing. Mm. Okay. So if you want to trade for Lowry marketing, you are going to have to make the Utah jazz want to trade Lowry marketing. So this is different than, yo, let's call the Utah Jazz and let's make an offer from Larry Markin and let's negotiate. Yeah, This is not that. This is, you have to call the Utah Jazz and you have to knock them over with an offer so much that they have no choice but to listen to you. And that is very different than calling the Utah Jazz and saying, hey, let's negotiate mm-hmm. on an offer. It's not a negotiation. <laughs> I had a source it's funny that you're asking me this. I had a source just last night tell me that a team called the Utah Jazz for Larry Marketing, and, and the conversation kind of went like this. They called the Utah Jazz. They said, hey, can we trade for Larry Marketing? And the Jazz said, okay, sh- you know, shoot me an offer. Mm. Shoot us an offer. The team shot the offer, and, you know, the Jazz were like, no, not interested. Um you know, you're going to have to make us want to trade for, want to trade Lowry. And the team that called said, what does that look like? And the answer that the team got was, I'm not going to, we are not going to tell you what that looks like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's what it is. And here's the thing. Lowry marketing is not the best player in the NBA. Maybe he never makes, uh, an all NBA team. But to me, from having covered him for two years, I don't, th- there aren't five more unique players in the NBA. There are just mm. not many seven footers who can shoot 40% from three pointer, from three point range on eight attempts a game, 
who also play above the rim and above the square like Lowry does and who also can get you 10 rebounds a game. He's like a seven foot Clay Thompson offensively that can also play above the rim. So with that, and he's very easy to play with. So if you have a great number one, he's your perfect number two, in my opinion, on a championship level mm-hmm. team. And the Jazz are like, okay, well, we have a number two. Let's just go and try to get our number one. So, you know, obviously, you know, there are a lot of teams that want that, but it's, it's just going to take a really, really, really um, – godfather type offer to make the jazz listen and you know i saw this on on twitter a couple of days ago i don't know that the sacramento kings have the ability to make that kind of offer they do not right they do not. let's keep it real they yeah. don't yeah, we, we don't have the assets that that daddy age would be looking for i will say tony one guy we do have the assets for is john collins I want him here in sacramento what's his future out there in utah and might he be made available now you could have John Collins for, for almost nothing if you got the money for him. Bam! No thanks. So. <laughs> what what happened out there? You know, we know what happened in Atlanta. How come it hasn't worked? Or what do you think his time in, in Utah has been like? Because his numbers has always looked pretty decent. I'm not going to say that it doesn't work. I, I I'm going to say this in in terms of in in terms of the Utah Jazz. They figured out in their system, and this might be different in another system, but they figured out in their system that John can only play the center spot. And, you know, if he can only play the center spot and for for what the Jazz want, you know, you're obviously just not going to be a really good defensive team with John Collins playing at the five. Um, You know, I like John. I've I've, I've loved covering him. I've I've Mm -hmm. loved dealing with him in the locker room. He's actually one of my favorite people that I've dealt with in, 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 in the last few years. Um, you know, I think he's a really good shooter. He's an above the rim athlete. Uh, he could put the ball on the floor. Uh, he can do a lot of things offensively. The problem is, you know, we went, you know, five, six years thinking he was six foot nine, he, you know, got to Utah is clearly six foot seven. And I think that makes, you know, an impact and, you know, he's just not a great defender uh, at all. So, you know, my sources say that the Jazz are, 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 are very open to trading Collins. Um, you know, um, they're not going to, you know, add value to try to trade him. Um, but I think if you could come up with, you know, the, 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 the number, his salary number uh, in a trade, I mean, you could definitely have a conversation with him on that. Them on that. Mm. Tony Jones is with us. He covers the Jazz and also the Nuggets for the Athletic. One of the things that's kind of alarming for uh, Kings fans, Tony, is Kings are looking up at so many teams in the West, but also looking back at teams that finished behind them last year that appear to be getting ready yeah. to make a move, like you know Houston and and San Antonio and and Memphis and of course your team. Um, how close do the Jazz feel they are to potentially being? a factor in the, in the whole playoff race in the West. I, I don't know that the jazz are a heck of a, a heck of a, a heck of a lot closer or, or close to, to being a real factor. Um, I think the West is going to be really ridiculous next year. Um, because I think, cause you look at all the teams that, you know, from one to two to one to 10, you know, all of those teams are going to come back next year and they're going to all expect to win, right? So everybody that finished 1 through 10, so the teams that finished outside of that 1 through 10 round were, it, it was the Houston Rockets, it was the Jazz, uh, it was uh, the Portland Trailblazers, Spurs, um, and it was the, the San Antonio Spurs, yeah. right? Yeah. So 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm missing a team somewhere. Memphis. Um, Memphis, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So you take those five teams, right? Memphis is going to expect to be back in the playoffs next year because they're going to get not only job back, they're going to get Marcus Smart back, they're going to they're going to get uh, Desmond Bain back. Like they're going to get healthy, and they're going to expect to be back in the playoffs next year. So you add another team, so that's eleven. 
the Houston Rockets almost gotten to the 10 this year. They're going to expect to be a whole heck of a lot better next year. They're going to expect to make 12, so that's 12. The San Antonio Spurs are, you know, they have Victor Wimbayama. They play really well down the stretch. You know, they're going to expect to be in the mix at least for a plan, so that's 13. Hmm. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens with the Jazz this summer. So, you know, at very minimum, you're going to have 13 teams going into next year who on paper are really good, who all, who are all going to expect to make the playoffs. And, you know, the, the, the older teams, uh, you're looking at the, the Los Angeles Lakers, they're not going to expect to, to regress because they're going to try to optimize, you know, the last couple of years of LeBron, um, you know, the, the Los Angeles Clippers are getting older, but you know, we, how, you know, you're not going to expect them to, to, to fall, you know, from fourth to out of the playoffs, you know, and then there's the Golden State Warriors and they're going to try to, to optimize the last few years of Stephen Curry. So, you know, you're going to have a real dogfight through thir- at least 13 teams next year in the Western Conference. And, you know, I think that, you know, what you're seeing in the finals right now is you know, uh, uh, a consequence of the dogfight this year. You know, the, the Dallas Mavericks, spent like what I saw in the first two games was a team that didn't have any legs because you know they had to fight tooth the nail uh through three rounds to to get out of the Western Conference and the Boston Celtics the Boston Celtics had a cakewalk uh to the finals and they're they're super fresh so you know I I think the West is going to be you know uh, a real dog fight next year and I don't know where the Jazz uh, fit into that. I do know that they want to. Um, I do know that they they want to be better next year. I do know they want to improve the roster over the off season. Um, but you know, we'll see how much they're able to improve the roster over the next one. Tony, I'm, I'm looking at the cap situation. Uh, you, you, your boys, uh, the the Jazz, they all have some cap space. Uh, is there anybody they're targeting? And do they expect to be active by way of uh, free agency, signing somebody or acquiring that star by way of trade? Well, they're going to have to they plan on renegotiating and extending live marketing, um, you know, but that's going to come in August. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, they're going to have, you know, about $35 million in cap space to start the summer. And, you know, it, I think that they will be, um, aggressive in the trade market and they'll be aggressive in the free agency market as well. Um, I do think they're going to be, you know, super aggressive in the trade market. I, they have the, the one thing that, you know, we haven't really mentioned is that they have three picks in this upcoming draft. They have pick 10, they have pick 29, they have pick 32. I do not expect them to use all three picks. I think they are going to trade at least one of them, I think they could possibly even trade two of them. Um, and I think they could possibly even look to trade the, the 10 pick uh, if, you know, they get a, if they, you know, find something good for, for, for a veteran. But, you know, they, you know, they're going to be, it, I, I've told, you know, I've, I've been on various shows and I've said, you know, kind of the same thing. If I were to jet, uh, if I were a jazz fan this summer, I would just expect anything. And this is like one of the first off seasons where, you know, I could say that about the jazz, you know, it, whatever they do, it won't surprise me. It won't surprise me if they use all three picks. It won't surprise me if they trade all three picks. It won't surprise me if they do something in between. It won't surprise me if they, you know, try to go all in and free agency. It won't surprise me if, um, they try to take all the picks and try to trade for a star. It won't surprise me if they do nothing and they go into next year, you know, kind of in a tank situation. Um, they just, they just kind of have the ability to, to kind of do, um, whatever, you know, the off season dictates, uh, going in, in into next season. Um, you know, w- what they want to do is, is, is improve the roster. Um, but, but I also think that, you know, they're going to try to, 
you know, it's kind of like, you know, take what the game gives you uh, when you're playing in a basketball game. I think they're going to try to take what the offseason gives them. Hey, Tony, my final question, man. Any chance we can uh, pry away a Jordan Clarkson or a Colin Sexton? Uh, what's those guys' future out there? Oh, yeah. You can call the Jazz and you can, you know, negotiate with, with them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody other than Larry Market, I think you know if you call the Jazz and, wow. and and you were serious about it, you could have a conversation. Uh, you can have a conversation on them. I, I will say this: um, I thought Colin Sexton had a great year, like not a good year. I thought he had a great year. I thought, um, you know, I thought that he really showed a lot when, when he got to the starting lineup, and you know, I thought that. Um, I thought that he got better. I thought he was coachable, um, you know, and I thought that that he was really good off the court um, in the sense of, hey, there's a rookie here, and by the rookie I'm talking about Keontae George, that we're trying to develop and we're trying to show, kind of showcase. And I thought that he handled that situation uh, really well. Uh, I'll say Jordan Clarkson kind of doesn't fit the – fit Utah's timeline. Uh, so, you know, I would think that he would be one of uh, the guys that I, that I think that, you know, you could, a team could trade for. Um, and, you know, obviously John Collins. And, you know, you can just have a listen. Call the Jazz up. Have conversations. Even my guy, Keontae George. I could get nah, my guy, Keontae George. They're not giving up Keontae. I love Keontae. I, no, I don't think they're giving up Keontae. Okay. You know, I don't know if you're going to have that conversation. All right. You can have a lot of them. Okay. Tony Jones, my guy. I'm looking at the uh, 1993 Philly All-League squad, man. Hey, Philly was a hotbed uh, back in the day when you and I were balling, man. Appreciate you for jumping on. I'm looking at Rasheed Wallace, Jason Lawson, Ty Weeks, Al Williams, Mark Jackson. Man, take me back to that day, man. We had some great times back then. Well, multiple of those guys were my teammates. Alvin was was my teammate in the Sunny Hill League. Uh, Mark was my teammate at Roman. Uh, we played against Rasheed Wallace that year. We got beat sixty to thirty nine. No, I'm sorry, sixty to twenty nine. Uh, that grad that team grad was, the team best was no team joke. That I've ever played yeah, against. yeah, that was um, a squad. And then the next year, I transferred to Frankfurt. And I made all public that next that next year. So now I don't remember that though. I don't remember that, Tony. Uh, okay, <laughs> man, you, you, just, just go on tetsillary and you can, and you can you'll see my name. Okay, okay. Appreciate you, man. Our boy Tony Jones, you, the Tony. athletic, uh, giving us the latest on the uh, trade rumors revolving the uh, involving the Jazz. Hey, man, we'll catch up soon. Okay, bro. Thanks. I appreciate you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. So all this. Uh, Laurie marketing, just yeah, just put it in the up in the shelf in the closet. Yeah, it, it ain't, ain't happening. happening. It ain't happening. He said a Godfather offer. Right. We we don't have a Godfather what kind of offer. What would it take to make this happen? We're not telling. We're you. We're not telling. You. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, gonna give you a shot at some tickets here in just a minute. When we come back, uh, we will uh, look at an injury that uh, actually the the whole NBA Finals may be flipping on this injury. That's when we come right back. Right now. Are you ready for the event of the summer? It's the Jug Live Charity Softball Game hosted by Sutter Health Park. It's Saturday, JaVale McGee, his celebrity squad with all proceeds going to water education programs, providing clean water to communities in need. So hit up the Folsom Lake Honda hotline right now. Looking for what caller number, Kyle? What caller? Eight. Caller Sly, <laughs> yes, three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty to score that pair of tickets to the premier charity event of the summer, the Jug Life Charity Softball Game. For more information, visit sackdownsports.com. Get your tickets now at juglifewater.com. On the move. 